my name is Emily Ann and today I'm going to be talking about the acoustic reflex pathway. I'm a second year AUD student at Northwestern University and this was a really tricky subject for me in my first year so I figured I'd put something out into the world to help explain it. All right so our acoustic reflex pathway we have four different pathways we can take and that is the right ipsilateral pathway, the right contralateral pathway, the left ipsilateral pathway, and the left contralateral pathway. Now, we have a naming convention for these different pathways, and we name for where the probe is placed. So, if your probe is in the right ear, that means that you're measuring a right pathway. If your probe is in the left ear, you're measuring a left pathway. Doesn't matter where the stimulus is, it only matters where the probe is placed. So let's talk about that, right? Ipsilateral pathway. This will be our right side of the brain. So we have our probe in our right ear. We have nothing in the left ear. And if our probe is in the right ear, that means that both the stimulus is being emitted by the probe and our response is also being measured by the probe in this scenario. So that sound is emitted into our right outer ear, which travels into our right middle ear to the right inner ear um, along cranial nerve number eight or the auditory nerve to the cochlear nucleus. And because we are ipsilateral, we're going up, staying on the right side. We go up to the right SOC or the superior olivary complex to the cranial nerve number seven or the facial nerves nucleus and then we take cranial nerve number seven down to the middle ear space and this is where the magic happens in the middle ear that cranial nerve number seven triggers the stapedial reflex and when the stapedial reflex happens it pulls the stapedius and thus the whole acicular chain tight and this tightening of the acicular chain limits the movement of the tympanic membrane and it lessens the um, loudness amplification in the middle ear so that the super loud sound that our ear heard from the probe is less amplified for the brain. And we measure this response through that probe, which is in our outer ear. So this is our right ipsilateral pathway. Now let's talk about that right contralateral pathway. We have a different setup here with the ears um, because it's right contralateral and we name for where the probe is placed. Our right probe is in our right ear, but the stimulus, because it's contralateral, meaning we gotta work both sides of the brain, is in our left ear. And you know it's the stimulus um, because it's the one that looks like the insert, okay? So let's start over here where our stimulus is in our left outer ear for that right contralateral pathway. Stimulus into the left outer ear, to the left middle ear, to the inner ear, to cranial nerve number eight or the auditory nerve, to the cochlear nucleus on the left side. Oh, but now because this is our contralateral pathway, we pass up across the brain into the SOC, cranial nerve number seven, nucleus. And then we take that cranial nerve number seven on the right hand side down to our right middle ear space where the stapedius muscle contracts, that ossicular chain um, tightens or stops moving as much. And our tympanic membranes movement is also lessened. And that response is measured through the right probe over here in our right outer ear. So I just described our right contralateral pathway. Okay, now let's talk about our left ipsilateral pathway. So this is our third pathway. For this setup, we have our probe into our left ear and the probe is responsible for both being the stimulus as well as measuring the response. So um, sound comes out into our left outer ear, then it goes through the middle ear, the inner ear, the cranial nerve number eight or the auditory nerve up into our cochlear nucleus. And because this is ipsilateral, we're keeping it all on the left hand side and we go up to the SOC or the superior olivary complex to cranial nerve number seven's nucleus. And then we go to cranial nerve number seven itself down to the middle ear. And in this cranial nerve number seven, what it does is it activates that stapedial muscle reflex 
and it pulls the stapedius and thus the whole ossicular chain tight, limiting the movement of that tympanic membrane. And we measure that response in our left outer ear because this is our left ipsilateral pathway. Okay, now let's talk about our very last pathway, the left contralateral pathway. And our naming convention is for, you know it, the probe ear. So we have our probe in our left ear. We have our stimulus in our right ear, which means we're starting over here. Sound emitted into the right ear, that right outer ear, travels to the middle ear, the inner ear, up cranial nerve number eight to the cochlear nucleus. And because this is a contralateral pathway, we are crossing to the other side of the brainstem. And we're in the SOC, the superior olivary complex, slash the cranial nerve number seven nucleus. Then we take cranial nerve number seven down to the middle ear space. And in this middle ear space is where that stapedial muscle is contracting. The ossicular chain's movement is being restricted and the tympanic membrane's movement is also being restricted. And we measure this response in our left outer ear. So that was the left contralateral pathway. Okay, so that is my summary of the four um, acoustic reflex pathways. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.